Hi everyone, welcome to Ask an Armorer. My name is Kia and today I'll be showing you what to do if your Epe fails the gauge or the shim test. Before we begin, what is the gauge test and what is it used for? Well, this two-part test is specific to Epe and basically just makes sure that the tip is seated properly and that there is a minimum distance that must be traveled before a point can be scored. With the contact spring being contained inside the barrel, it would be really easy for somebody to cheat by just extending this spring a bit and reducing that travel distance, therefore making it easier to score a point. So this test is just put into place to prevent that. The smaller gauge is 0.5 millimeters, the larger one is 1.5, and both have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.05 millimeters. For this, you'll need your tip screwdriver, and if you want, you can have a magnetic ball and a roll of tape on hand to make life easier. You'll also want some spare contact springs in case you find yours isn't in good shape anymore and needs to be replaced. You can find these at any fencing vendor. Finally, to make sure you've actually fixed the issue, you'll want your set of gauges, a body cord that you know works, and a test box. To get set up, Lay the epe on your work surface with the tip pointing towards your non-dominant hand. To make this more stable, you can put the bell guard in the roll of tape, therefore making this positionable and not able to roll away from you. Place the tip over the magnetic bowl to catch any smalling parts. And as I've said before, this is just my setup and what I find works best for me, so if you prefer a different method, go ahead and do that. Using your non-dominant hand, support the end of the blade and hold the tip down to remove pressure on the screws with your thumb. This also allows you to form a cup with your palm to catch anything that falls if you don't have a magnetic bowl. Then using your dominant hand, take your screwdriver and remove the screws. After taking the tip apart, the part you'll want is the small spring attached to the base of the button. This is the contact spring and what's responsible for actually completing the epe circuit. In the case of the failing gauge test, this spring has become too long and is contacting the epe wires before it's supposed to. To fix this, all you need to do is gently turn the screw further onto the tip, so clockwise. Go very slowly, maybe a quarter turn at a time, as this is a pretty fine measurement. Once it's been reset, put the tip back in with only one screw to test it. It's annoying to have to keep going back and forth with testing, but it's the reality of this kind of fix. To put the tip back together, first take the larger weight spring and put that inside the barrel, followed by the button. Make sure to line up the holes for the screws with the slots in the side of the barrel for them. Now, the easiest method that I have found for wrangling screws, regardless of if I have a magnetic or a non-magnetic screwdriver, is to first take my screw and place it onto the end of the driver and just use a finger to brace it so that it can't fall off or shift orientation. Then using the same technique that we use to take it apart in reverse, depress the tip and put in the first screw. Remember, we're just doing one screw at this point so that when we test, if we need to go back in, it's easier to open it up rather than having to do both screws. To test, take your body cord and test box and just plug them into your epe. Then take your gauges and first insert the larger one under the button to make sure that it fits. If that, if yes, good. Then take the smaller one, insert it and depress the tip. Remember, you do not want anything to happen with your test box at this point because you do not want contact to be made. If this is the case, you're good to go and put the second screw back in. If not, you'll have to open it back up and repeat these steps as many times as required until your epe passes the test. And that's it. Your epe is ready to get back on piste. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, if you have any questions, comments, or other topics you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know down below. See you in the next one. Bye.